Welcome to Lamora's Cards and Horrors. I'm Matthew, and this is another CDH beginner guide video where I have experienced members of the community come on to teach you about one of their decks. If you enjoy this video, like, comment, subscribe, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can make more of these and make them better for you. And with that, I'll pass it over to this episode's guest. Hey, what's up? My name is Dan, otherwise known as Moderately Anonymous MTG. I am the host of Moderately Anonymous MTG on YouTube and on Twitch. Kess is a turbo ad nauseum strategy. I am trying to lay down a lot of fast mana in the early game, churn through card advantage spells like Wheel of Fortune and Ad Nauseum to refill our hand, and then eventually close out the game with Thoracle Combos or Underworld Breach. So this is a deck that mulligans pretty aggressively. We're trying to stick fast mana in the early game. We're always looking to have cards like Mana Crypts or Mox Diamond or things like that to accelerate either the amount of mana that we can make or hopefully the colored mana that we can make as well to diversify the kinds of spells that we can create. And what we want to basically do is mulligan for hands that have lots of mana and basically one action spell. And by action spells, we're looking at things like Wheel of Fortune or Ad Nauseam, things that can really refill our hand. And then once we have refilled our hand, continue to do that pretty much as many times as necessary. We've got outs in the deck to win like Mnemonic Betrayal that pay off all of our Wheel of Fortune effects. And then we've also got all sorts of layered win cons like Praetor's Grasp. We can take other people's win cons. We can win the game just with Brain Freeze by Brain Freezing our opponents out, or we can use it on ourselves to refuel our yard for Kess to cast extra spells or eventually get Underworld Breach on board and Brain Freeze ourselves until we can fast as Oracle. So with Kess on board, there's a couple of cheap and easy win cons that we have in the deck. One of them is using Tainted Pact or Demonic Consultation. If Kess is on board, we can cast either one of those spells from our hand to be able to go and pick up Fast's Oracle out of our deck and then cast the uh, Tainted Pact or the Demonic Consultation out of our yard to be able to go and exile the rest of our library and win with Fast's Oracle. The other line that we have is using the card Intuition. If we have Kess on board, we can make an Intuition pile that is reanimate Demonic Consultation and Fast's Oracle so that way, no matter which card that we get, we can use uh, Kess's ability to cast the other half of the combo out of our graveyard. So this deck is looking to really take advantage of the early game and try to take advantage of the abundance of fast mana that we have. We're on things like Simeon Spirit Guide and Rite of Flame to really maximize the amount of mana that we can make both cheaply and for free very quickly in the early game. We're also trying to disrupt our opponents by using the Wheel of Fortune effects that are simultaneously refueling our hands. So we're leveraging the fact that we can use our mana a lot quicker than our opponents. And we have all of the rituals that are basically available to us outside of a few things like Burnt Offering and Calling the Week that are a little bit less useful for this deck. But otherwise, we're trying to basically be as fast as we can with our mulligans and with our game plan. We're trying to be extremely aggressive so that we can take advantage of other decks that are not as well equipped to land advantage bases in the early game as we are. So ideal turn one, we're landing a land and maybe an extra piece of mana like a Ox Diamond or a Lotus Petal, and then hopefully another piece of mana as well. Like if we get a Mana Crypt on board, if we can transition into having between four and five mana on our second turn between literal fast mana rocks and ritual spells in our hands, we basically want to be somewhere in that region so that we can refuel our hand with a Wheel of Fortune effect fairly early. So we're looking to have fast mana on our opening hand, stick that on turn one. We maybe even want to be wheeling as quickly as turn one if we can make the extra mana advantage for it. Putting down just a land and a mana crypt in Wheel of Fortuning is not the best way to do it because we prefer to have more mana that we have left over afterwards to start chaining some other things. But if we feel like we need to get certain things out of opponent's hands, if we feel like we want to get people's game plans out from under them, put them in a situation where they have a hand that they did not mulligan into, that they weren't planning on having, those sorts of situations can really heavily favor us. So we're trying to stick those sorts of disruptive spells by turn one or two. And then by turn two to three, we're trying to transition into winning the game by taking over the board with advantage spells like, again, Ad Nauseum or Underworld Breach. I think the mistake that I see people make when they are first picking up this deck is how to mulligan. 
This is a deck that favors you mulligan very aggressively for the kinds of specific hands that we want to keep. Or we're talking about keeping hands that want to stick fast mana and early advantage spells. It can be very different than the way that a lot of people are used to mulliganing, where they're not used to mulliganing so aggressively. But this is a deck where we don't mind going down to five or four so much. Having more cards in your hand is better than not. But what we really want is to just be able to stick fast mana, cast a Wheel of Fortune effect, and disrupt our opponents at the same time. So it doesn't really matter how many cards we open with. And I think that's something that people are a little bit shy about at first. People want to keep sevens. People want to have a smooth ride. But this is a deck that really rewards you for playing it very aggressively. So I think not being afraid to mulligan very aggressively with this deck is something that I think that people should think about when they're picking it up. One thing that you'll definitely find over time and the more you learn this deck is that there are so many ways to win that you'll find more and more often that your win conditions aren't necessary. I've exiled a Thassa's Oracle or an Underworld Breach to spells many, many times. And the things that you need to win in this deck are very minimal because all of the individual spells are extremely potent. So I would just say the more you play this deck, the more you see the very many tightly layered win cons that are inside of it. My general mulligan advice would just be try to keep a hand that has a plan. We don't want a lot of fast mana if we don't have a way to capitalize on it in a draw spell or an advantage spell. And likewise, we don't want a payoff spell if we don't have the fast mana to be able to cast it quickly. When you're looking at your hands, you want to make sure that you have both of those things, mana and a payoff spell. So you have to not be afraid to mulligan aggressively to get those things. Okay, so for this first hand, we've got three lands. We've got an action spell in our Mystical Tutor. Ledger Shredder is a way that can help us fuel our graveyard. We've got Brain Freeze, which is a payoff for our Underworld Breach, and we've got a Force of Negation. This hand doesn't really do a whole lot, though. We can Mystical Tutor for pretty much anything. Of course, it's a very flexible spell in our deck, but with no fast mana and no particular payoff that we're really working towards in this hand that Mystical Tutor can get, I think this is a pretty easy ship. This one is a really close hand because we have got a really good payoff for our mana in Doxide Extortionist and Chain of Vapor. Chain of Vapor can also provide us some a little bit of protection against opposing stack pieces if we want it. We've got Defense Grid to help protect our win, a Lion's Eye Diamond to help fuel a win, but we've just got no action spell in this hand, and I try not to keep any hands that don't have any sort of action, like not even a Brainstorm or a Ponder or something like that, because we've got a very high density of mana spells in this deck, so our probabilities of drawing an action spell that can really take advantage of the amount of mana that we have in this hand. I don't want to be hinging our bets on the probability of that rather than the probability of just looking at a fresh seven and taking something more aggressive. So this is a pretty perfect hand. We've got two payoff spells in Rhystic Study or Wheel of Fortune. We've got the mana to cast it between Chrome Mox and Mana Vault. If this was a Mold of Five, I think that we're probably just going to mulligan the Rhystic Study and the Dispel, keep the Fluster Storm, and we can either exile the Fluster Storm to the Chrome Mox or exile something that we draw off the top on turn one to the Chrome Mox. And then we've got a couple of mana. We've got a Mana Vault that we can eventually put back in our hand with something like a Chain of Vapor or an Alchemist Retrieval. And yeah, this is a pretty perfect perfect hand. I think we do really well generally against Sans blue decks. We're really good at just being a lot more aggressive than mono to two color decks and a lot of three color decks as well. We can even be really great against stacks because we're so aggressive. There's a lot of ways for us to really get up underneath stacks decks and also ride over the top of them if the game happens to go long. I think where we really struggle is against some of the four color piles that can grind a little bit better from their command zone. Things like Timnacrom and even decks like Timna and Thrasios, just things that have a little bit Bit more grindability in the command zone, those can pull out a lot from under us in mid to long games. But I really like where this deck stands in terms of decks there. A little bit slower than us, so we can really take advantage of that. Kess is a really fun deck. There's a lot of really fun considerations in the CEDH meta right now for Grixis and Grixis plus decks to choose from. What I really like about Kess is its adaptability and the fact that there's a lot of different ways that you can play it and a lot of different ways that it can win the game. So yeah, it's a really fun option. I think if you're looking for something that is really adaptable and something that can really play over the long haul of the meta changes, this is a deck that I've been playing for all three, four years that I've been playing CEDH. So it's a deck that's been around for a long time. It's a deck that'll continue to be around for a long time because it's just got the base power level of what you need to compete in this meta. So it's a deck that I really enjoy. And I think if you're looking for something that you want to enjoy in the Grixis Pie for a long time, this is a really great deck to cut your teeth on.